Hey everybody, Sterling R. Jackson. Today I want to talk about compression and airflow and uh, utilizing that correctly. Um, I had a student recently that wanted to learn more about distortion or adding grit to his voice and I found out that he was having some trouble with the overuse of air. And a lot of people have a preconceived notion that you know, to get distortion they should be pushing harder or using more air and that's actually the opposite of that. So um, let's talk about this more in depth. Alright everybody, um, so I'm going to try to make this shorter because my lessons always end up being like 20 minutes long. I don't want to keep it a little bit shorter. Uh, so I just want to touch on some key points and some of the ways that this works. Try to give you a little bit of way, uh, try to practice it or try to find it. And then I'm going to try to uh, carry that over to Patreon where I extend these lessons for, uh, for people that you know want to learn more. So if you want to join me there, uh, the link should be in the description. So um, as I mentioned, uh, I was talking to somebody about um, compression. And actually we were talking about just straight up distortion and then we had to back down from that uh, more intense level and talk about compression and the utilizing uh, airflow. So um, if you're not utilizing your airflow correctly in singing, you're already going to have some troubles and you're already going to have some problems with the way that you sing, with the way that your voice is operating and with drying out your voice as well. Anytime, anytime there is an overuse of air, meaning something, you know, we'll say more than your speaking voice would be uh, using. If I start going like this and I start whispering a lot, my voice is going to go downhill pretty fast. Uh, once again, that seems contrary to people's uh, understanding of these things because they think if they hurt their voice, if they whisper, it will be better. It is not better. Uh, anytime there's an overuse of air or extra air passing over the vocal cords, um, those little folds tend to dry up and they tend to start kind of swelling and all kinds of things go downhill. So when we talk about distortion and we talk about adding grit to things, let me let you know what's happening on, you know, uh, on an airflow level or a compression level or something like that with distortion. First of all, you're getting quieter when you distort all the time. Screams, all that stuff. It's all quieter than clean. The illusion is that it's louder. It is not. Um, the modern way that people process music and compression and all that kind of stuff makes things seem like an equal level. Or if you're using a microphone, there's certain things you can do to try to make it louder. But um, it's a very logical thing if you think about it and break it down. Uh, if I have a clean note, ah, ah, like this, simple. If I distort that, I am putting stuff over top of that note. I am collapsing in over top of that note, thereby making it quieter. I'm almost muffling it in a sense. And in some ways I might have to push harder so there might be a balance in pressure, volume, or whatever, but for the most part, it's getting quieter. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Ah, 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 ah. Hear that? So it's kind of dampening it and quieting it down. Uh, simple, more stuff in the way. But on another level, what's happening is that my throat is getting smaller. It is compressing to make that sound. Um, now it's not only compressing in one place, it's compressing in another place which is kind of close to the vocal cords in that I am compressing my use of air. I am holding my breath. Now, I don't like teaching this stuff that much and, and sometimes I get weird about certain teachers teaching it because depending on your level of where you are and you're singing, you know, uh, when people start talking about compressing and holding your breath and stuff, it can get into some places where you kind of might hurt your voice or you're setting up really bad like systems uh, that it's just it gets really weird and I, I worked with somebody recently who was like doing all these compression exercises all the time huh, huh, and trying to build strength and then when I heard him sing everything was wrong like everything was wrong so however long this person had been doing these exercises to build strength he was building coordination in the wrong way and I want to give you another analogy for that <laughs> no making this short already aren't I so if you have a screwed up spine and you have a spine like this, if you go to the gym and you start working out, you're reinforcing musculature over top of your already screwed up spine. Um, chiropractors and doctors and everything, would, they would tell you, no, 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 we got to straighten you out first and then build muscle to help support a correct coordination or a correct posture. Um, it's the same thing with the voice. If you're not in the right coordination or you're not in the right posture, we'll say, 
but you're still trying to build strength, that doesn't make any sense. There's a good chance, if you don't check in with a vocal coach or something like that, that you might be building musculature or just making a habit stronger and stronger, and then you gotta release all that tension. So, um, either way, we're gonna talk about it. Um, I talked about Chris Stapleton in a video, and I talked about Chris Cornell in a video, I talked about Rob Halford in a video. Um, these people are utilizing their airflow, and they're using less air the higher they go, but they're using less air for when they distort as well. So if we want to try to get into understanding this, um, and this is something you're going to practice all the time when you're singing, to varying degrees. You might not be somebody that does compression heavily, but then again you might as well, especially if you want to get into distortion. So if we take something like this, I should turn up the piano. If we get into something like this, I want you to think about your compression point. Now you're going to hear me talk about this stuff quite often throughout videos. Your threshold or your compression point. The resonance is like an elevator, and it's like a thermometer in the body. It moves from chest voice to head voice, up through pharyngeal space, everything. There are specific thresholds that you can grab a hold of or where your pressure is going to sit. Most people only think about or associate their pressure from down here, because that's where they build pressure, that's where they feel pressure, that's where they build a wall and then hit and flip and all that kind of stuff. There are more pressure points than that. There are more compression thresholds, blah, 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 blah. And when you find them, you can move above them and below them, but they're mostly uh, there to hold your voice together, hold your vocal cords together, chord closure, et cetera, et cetera. Either way, if we set up compression first, kind of down here, without too much tension, just like we're holding our breath, if we take a breath down here and make sure that we're being diaphragmatic, if we breathe down here, and then we just create a glottal stop, we, we stop breathing from up here. So we're stopping the breath from being pushed out of the diaphragm. Now, if we put that into a couple notes, or let's do one note first. I want you to pay attention to your threshold or your compression point and slowly open that back up. Not going ha, ah, or anything like that. And you shouldn't be up here. Ha, ha, we should be ha, ah. Right? Make sense? Ha, ah, ha, ah, ha, ah. You hear that? So that's a simple compression um, or a simple way to start understanding compression. We're holding that breath back. Now, if we start to move towards uh, a heavier compression or distortion. Let's go into that. I don't know why I was playing a minor chord, but it's because I'm sad today. Here we go. Let's start right here. So we're going to go. Now, if we think about our compression a little bit above that now, we're going to start finding uh, what's called the false chords. Uh, our vocal chords down here false chords here, and we have soft palate up here, all this tubular type of thing we have going on here. So if we think about it a little bit higher and we make like an E or an EH sound, we're gonna be going and you can already hear I'm finding those those uh, false chords rattling. There I'm finding distortion, simple as that. Um, uh, and you, I'm going with ah too. You might hear an eh or an ah kind of sound, but either way, I'm trying to pull those those chords in above it. Uh, if you use e and you project towards the mask, I'm sure you can find this pretty fast. Eh, 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 there they are. Good times, all right. Throat singing. So uh, let's try one more. I've talked about this as well. Distortion near the soft palate is harder to find. If you find mixed voice, or if we talk about mixed voice really quick. Our compression point moves from here to up here. I just did a short video about this as well. You hear the whole difference between my compression point is now up here, up quite a, kind of close to the soft palate or like a nasal space. That's where mixed voice exists. So if I take this, hold the breath back. notes, I'm sorry. I wanted to go higher because it's mixed voice. Make sense? Now if I try to find distortion up there, really quick, we're moving very fast. You have to
to go higher for this one and get closer to your bridge. Where am I? Ha! Ah! There it is. Ha! Ah! Ha! Ah! 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 <laughs> so there's some distortion. There's some compression tricks. I'm going to take this over to Patreon and see if I can't extend this lesson. Thank you for tuning in. I hope it makes some sense. Uh, I can try to answer some questions if you have them in the comment section, but uh, as you can tell, this stuff gets a little complicated. Keep working at it, keep experimenting. The important key things here are do not go louder. There's no point in going louder. It is an illusion. It is not turning the amp up to 11 and now it's distorting and it sounds badass. It is not overusing air. Ha! <sighs> it's like that. You will blow your voice out almost immediately. And uh, with that, I'm out. All right, bye.